Hi, my name is Jonathan Hicks. I'm back at the Dice Cup, and this evening I'm joined by Steve, Steve, and Matt. And we've just finished playing Aquasphere. Now this is a Stefan Feld game with a rather strange theme. You're sort of underwater in some kind of underwater base, and there are lots of octopuses uh, floating around that are causing problems. And you spend your time programming robots to sort of deal with the problems, but also gain points. Like most Stefan Feld games, you're getting points for lots of different things. Now the way you program robots is quite nice. Uh, you, when it's your turn, you can move one of these guys up to the next section, and this lets me program a submarine robot. So on my board here, you have a bunch of robots and all the different actions you can take are sort of at the top where you program the robots. So I take my robot and stick it in the submarine action. Uh, but you'll notice the arrows on here. If I decide to do this one, it means I can't program an octopus robot. And if I go here, after that, I can go to the time one for this arrow or I could cross to the sort of black gem thing. But there are certain routes through and if you take certain robot programming actions, that prevents you from taking others. So there's some interesting decisions to be made there. Anyway, so you program your robots down here, uh, and once you've programmed a robot, you can then use the robot on the board. Now, you have a scientist uh, somewhere, where's my guy gone? Here he is. And each of these sort of domed areas here allows you to take uh, the different actions, but if you want to move to a different domed area, you're paying time. So time is a very valuable resource in this game, these little clocks. And I'd have to pay one time to cross into this dome, another time to cross into this dome, uh, some of them are actually free, some of them are more expensive, so it, it can be tricky figuring out where you want to go. But let's say I just want to take the action here, I would take my programmed robot, you sort of bump this guy into storage, so this shows that you're controlling the area, that's the important the end of each round, you have some sort of area control points. Uh, but then I was programming a submarine, so I could take one of my submarines down here and put it in the appropriate section. You have to pay a bit of time for that. Uh, and the different actions, just very quickly, are that you can try and get these green things on the edge so you take one and add it to the wheel effectively you can see there are letters here you're trying to get all the different letters you get lots of end game scoring if you manage to get all the letters from a to f here but also each time you get one of these green things it increases your capacity i can only store four time but if i were to get a green thing with time on it like this one over here that lets me store more time so you're kind of expanding your abilities here by adding these things on. Uh, the next action, this is just where you get time. The time kind of piles up in various spaces on the board and you get to take more of it by taking that action. These black gems are very important. You get a little bit of scoring for them, like points at the end of each round. But crucially, if you see the scoring track around the edge here, it has these red laser beam lines. You can't cross the laser beam line unless you either spend a gem or kind of deprogram one of your robots, which you don't want to do. So you sort of want to collect the black gems to help you get past those red lines, which is quite critical. Uh, killing octopuses, uh, you lose points for any octopuses in your area. Because I control this area, this octopus is actually going to lose me some points. So you can take this action to kill the octopuses, which actually gets you points, which is nice. That's sticking the submarines down. You're getting points the more robots you've got out, but you need to get the matching submarines out to actually score the points for each column. Uh, then you've got some special ability cards, the sort of cogwheel lets you buy special abilities which might get you extra points or reduce time costs when you're doing various actions. And finally there's a kind of miscellaneous white robot which will um, let you program all kinds of different things. So in this space the white robot lets you program submarines, in this space the white robot lets you program the red robot, so it kind of lets you program the various different robots around the board. So you program your robots using your robots in lots of different ways and you're going to score points at the end of each round uh, and then finally you're scoring points for various different things as I was saying like the letters at the end of the game and most points wins. What do we think? Uh, I'm clearly going to like it, Stefan Fowl is uh, one of my favourite designers um, and I like this because the mechanics uh, mesh quite well, it feels like you've got purpose for doing, well I mean loosely feels like you've got a purpose of doing things, going around the station to do the various things, to pick up things in different bits, it takes you time to get there and that makes sense, time is very valuable. Uh, a couple things I really like, I quite like the programming track, so basically um, I can always do this action on my turn. It might take me a while to get there, it might be low down or higher, but I can always do it. But it's going to stop me doing something else. So there's always one action I can definitely do, but not necessarily two actions I want to do. There are other ways to do that. The programming white robot guy is quite nice. You think, why would you program a ro robot that all he can do is program a different robot? 
but it kind of gives you time, it gives you options. If you program white robot, you might be able to do a different action twice in a round by getting your white robot to program the other robot you want to do, if that makes sense. Um, so that's quite nice, uh, different ways to score points, and I, I, I although it kind of is quite harsh, I've fallen foul of it a few times, but the not having the black gems to cross the barriers at scoring, you need to make sure you've got that, because I think uh, at, le at least two or three of us um, got to that point, we hit that barrier and we're like, oh, okay, I've wasted some points here because I didn't have the required thing to get past them. That's quite a nice thing to do. Okay, Steve. This is the uh, the first Steffenfeld uh, game that I've actually had the privilege of, uh, of playing and I, I've now got an awful headache. Um, it was very heavy, the heaviest game I've ever played in my entire life. There's uh, plenty of times where I was thinking, what on earth is the right uh, move uh, to, uh, to make in this scen uh, scenario? It was very in uh, enjoyable. Like Steve s uh, said, the uh, the, la uh, the laser beams ma uh, make it uh, very important to uh, collect these uh, these black gems, or you're just going to waste points uh, by not being able to uh, uh, to collect them. Um, but yeah, very 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 enjoyable. Yeah, not a bad game. Okay, Matt. Yeah, um, like everyone said, it's quite a complicated game. Um, the programming aspect is very interesting, very cool, the way it works. Uh, the player interaction is um, good as well. Good in an annoying, infuriating way. <laughs> you can kind of see what people are planning to do. Like if uh, Steve's programmed a robot to uh, build a submarine, at some point in the turn, he's probably going to build a submarine somewhere. Uh, and he screwed me over this game by moving halfway around the, the this underwater base to build a submarine where I wanted to build it, which totally destroyed my whole plan. Not intentionally, but I wish it was. Because <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> um, I'd programmed my uh, submarine making robot and I had enough time to build that submarine, <coughs> go next door where there was more time and pick up that time. But because he came and stole my submarine space, I then had to make other plans. Um, and yeah, I completely blame Steve for me losing this game. But yeah, it's it's really good. I I should have probably seen that coming. Um, maybe there wasn't anywhere else he could uh, make a submarine, or uh, maybe he also wanted to do something else in that space later. Um, but yeah, there's so much to think about, and if you keep an eye on what other people are doing, it can yeah help you to not get knocked out of places, and also yeah knock other people out of places that you want to be. So yeah, it's really complex, uh, but it's, uh, it's a very good programming game. Rating? I would say... Um, oh god. Um, I'd probably give it eight and a half mm. out of ten. Okay. Steve? This is the first time I've played this, uh, this kind of uh, game. I did find it difficult, but I would imagine that if I played this type of uh, game more frequently, it would, uh, uh, it would grow on me, but at the moment I'd say it's a, a solid seven and a half. Okay. I guess tonight, I'm going to go back to what Matt said, you can kind of predict what people are going to do because before they can take an action, they have to program a robot to do that. So if I look at Jonathan's board and he's got no robots programmed, he cannot stop me doing what I want to do. Okay, before my turn. But if I can see he's just probed up the robot to kill octopuses, I'm like, he's going to be able to do that before me. There's no way I can do that. So you can kind of predict it, which is quite a nice thing. Okay. I really like it. Um, I always found Steffenfeld games quite dry, but I find the more I play them, the more I enjoy them. This one has the strangest theme of any of his games. And the first time I played it, I got fixated on the flipping octopuses that kept stealing points off me. So I went around killing lots and lots of these octopuses, um, but actually I didn't do very well overall. There's so much to think about, and I really like the way, which is true for a lot of Fell games really, that you can chain different actions together. So you can do this action, which will let you do this other action. So you've, actually, you've often got to plan a few sort of actions in advance, and I really like it. It engages me throughout. I'd be a big fan of this one. I'd be on eight out of 10. All right, thanks for watching. That was Aquasphere.